is here. Now, broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. This is the best of Mark Levin. Merry Christmas. Mitt Romney says he sees no evidence to support the impeachment, even an impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden. Jamie Raskin, a Marxist rat fink that was involved in both impeachments of Donald Trump, that was involved in objecting to Donald Trump's election and the electors in 2016 on the floor of the House, who has promoted the the outrageous argument that the 14th Amendment in Section 3 prevents Donald Trump from being on state ballots. Every state court now has rejected that. And hates the men who wrote the Constitution. His father was a Marxist and a Sovietologist, if you will. And Raskin's no different. And yet he's on TV all the time. But Romney is remarkable for his stupidity and his arrogance dressed up as self-righteousness. Let me educate the senator who took an oath to uphold the Constitution about the president who took an oath to uphold the Constitution is failing to do so. Let's start here. Article 2, Section 3. You haven't heard any of this today, I bet. Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution of the United States. He, meaning the president, shall from time to time give to Congress information of the State of the Union and recommend to their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. He may, on extraordinary occasions, convene both houses, or either of them. And in case of disagreement between them with respect to the time of adjournment, he may adjourn them to such time as he shall think proper. He shall receive ambassadors and other public ministers. Here's the key. He shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed and shall commission all the officers of the United States. This is called the Take Care Clause. The Constitution provides that the President shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. This duty potentially implicates at least five categories of executive power. Including, number one, powers the Constitution confers directly upon the President by the opening and succeeding clauses of Article 2. Powers that con- Congressional Acts, number two, directly confer upon the President. Number three, powers that Congressional Acts confer upon heads of departments and other executive agencies of the federal government. Number four, Power that stems implicitly from the duty to enforce the criminal statutes of the United States. Number five, power power to carry out the so-called ministerial duties regarding which an executive officer can exercise limited discretion in the occasion or manner of their discharge. Now, He shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. There's another part of the Constitution where the president has a specific oath of office. Somewhat different than everybody else in the federal government. Somewhat different than judges and senators and congressmen. He shall faithfully execute the laws of the United States. It's not an option. It's not a choice. It's not a thought process. He shall. He shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. He shall take care that the laws are enforced, that they are executed. Mitt Romney says he has seen nothing that suggests Joe Biden has committed an impeachable offense. So you have those two sections of the Constitution. They're explicit. Not may, he shall, he must. Even laws he disagrees with. 
There's been plenty of Supreme Court precedent that is litigation on this issue. It means what it says. Then we go to the impeachment clause. And the impeachment clause is complicated for your average legal analyst on CNN and MSNBC and elsewhere, but it's not complicated. The bottom line on the impeachment clause is this. A president shall not commit acts or fail to act in the society, when the country is in trouble or create circumstances intentionally creating such an environment in the country. When a president of the United States refuses to actually visit Acknowledge, correct policies that clearly, specifically, intentionally, and directly violate federal laws that he is required to uphold. I don't mean just challenge them in court. I mean once the dust settles, refuses to enforce them, that is a high crime. Under our Constitution. That is what's meant by a high crime. He is committing acts, illegal acts, unconstitutional acts against the country. We don't need to look at bank accounts to figure that out, America. We don't need to look at wires. We don't need to look at foreign governments. We don't need to look at anything except his conduct. We don't need depositions. We don't need notes. We don't need texts. We don't need phone records. We don't need subpoenas. Joe Biden is unilaterally violating separation of powers, violating his oath of office, violating the take care clause of the United States Constitution as he directs his regime to keep the border open. To defy existing federal immigration law. To allow millions of people to pour into the country who are unvetted. Thereby threatening the safety and security of our society. Encouraging foreigners to come into our country and overrun our towns and our cities. To overrun law enforcement and our hospitals. It is a high crime. Joe Biden's conduct and the conduct of his subordinates in violating not one, but a score of federal immigration laws, undermining the ability of the Border Patrol, undermining the ability of administrative law judges, undermining the ability of customs, of federal law enforcement, of state law enforcement, of local law enforcement, to protect their communities, to protect the country from millions and millions of illegal aliens coming into the country, potentially terrorists and criminals, undoubtedly, policies that are encouraging drug cartels, kidnappers, To rape women. To rape children. To sell them into sex slavery. Pouring billions of dollars into the coffers of the drug cartels south of the border. With sales of fentanyl and other deadly drugs. In our country to our kids, to our grandkids. Resulting in the death of tens of thousands. Trampling private property rights for ranchers and others on the border. Destroying their communities. Because there's nowhere to put them. There's so many of them. This is a high crime. This is a high crime. It is a violation of the United States Constitution in at least two respects. And it is unleashing 
economic, societal, cultural, and criminal mayhem in our country. And Biden knows it. He should be impeached. He should be removed. What is it that Mitt Romney doesn't see? That Mitt Romney says there is no basis for even an impeachment inquiry. That Mitt Romney is the favorite host among other reprobate Republicans in the fifth column in this country. On the most dastardly, dishonest propaganda platforms in America, especially on their Sunday shows, where he seeks to undermine not just this party, not just the country, but the people who have suffered horrendously from an open border. The people who've been raped and sold into sex slavery, the children who go missing. The Americans who are dying from criminals, fentanyl and other drugs. Mitt Romney doesn't see it. He doesn't see a high crime. He's an ignoramus at a minimum. Jamie Raskin, an American-hating Marxist, who year after year leads coup efforts, and did during the presidency of Donald Trump, while he's claiming that Donald Trump is the dictator. Raskin, who hates our country, hates our Constitution, hates capitalism, is now in talks with some Republicans. To try and convince all they need are two or three to vote against an impeachment inquiry. Because Raskin doesn't give a damn what's happening on the border or to our country. He hates it. He hates our economic system. He hates our history. He's a chip off his old daddy's Marxist block. You can Google all this information. High crime. The reason CNN isn't on the border day in and day out. The reason MSNBC is not on the border day in and day out. The reason the New York Times spends more time trying to knock off Benjamin Netanyahu than to protect and secure our southern border. Same with the Washington Post and the rest of the media. Is because they support this. They hate America too. If they love America, they have a funny way of showing it. They have bent over backwards to try and land Donald Trump in prison. With phony charges on January 6th, phony document charges that have never been used against a president. Espionage Act has never been used against a president, a vice president, a former attorney general, any cabinet secretary that I'm aware of. It's a throwback to 1917 and Woodrow Wilson. Doesn't matter. They dusted off a Klan act to go after Trump. Here we have it straight, forward, black and white. What's taking place on our border? Who's responsible? The Supreme Court said not long ago in a case that involved Arizona, the former governor there, a case that was again ruled wrongly, that the president has plenary power to make decisions about what goes on. But, of course, that doesn't mean he has plenary power to defy, undermine, and violate specific statutory language and the intention of those statutes. Joe Biden has blood on his hands. In the Middle East with Israelis. And in the United States with even more civilian deaths. Says he's a two-state solution for Israel, which will be the final solution. Well, I have a solution for what's going on on the border. Impeach Joe Biden. Now. Any Republican who opposes it must be defeated. Period. This is not some extreme or radical position. This is exactly why the impeachment clause is there. And this is exactly why the high crime language is in the impeachment clause. 
This is exactly what they meant by a high crime. I'm sure my education in Mitt Romney has fallen on deaf ears because he's an idiot. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Have a very Merry Christmas. Joe Biden pretends that he's a righteous man. He's a moral man. He won't secure our border. The level of inhumanity, devastation, rape, murder from drugs and else and other ways of killing people. We've never seen like this on the southern border, ever. We go through the numbers of the millions of people coming across the border. That's crucially important. But what about what's going on on the southern border? And I want to really focus in on this in a big way, in a huge way. So stick with me. I'll be right back. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. This is Mark Levin wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Now back to the best of me. Let me show you how bereft of any moral substance Joe Biden Anthony Blinken, the entire cast and crew at CNN and MSNBC, at Dan Abrams' Democrat Mediaite, at Soros' Democrat Media Matters. Let me show you how they lacked all humanity. You see the southern border? I want to read something to you, and I want to pull it all together for you. This is CNN. Rifts between Biden and Netanyahu spill into public view. They've been trying to destroy Netanyahu for over a decade, trying to undo his government, spent money, our money, to try and undo the government. They have a propagandist, a drumbeat, and Tom Friedman and others at the New York Slimes, CNN, MSNBC, Joe Scarborough, illiterate, very dumb Joe Scarborough, the the grown up from a little boy on on the bridge and deliverance, the banjo player, that's Joe Scarborough. 
Rifts between the United States and Israel spilled into public view Tuesday as President Joe Biden warned that Israel was losing international support for its campaign against Hamas and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu publicly rejected American plans for post-war Gaza. By the way, the latest poll shows Americans strongly support Israel. Democrats less so, but they still do. Republicans very strongly. So this is the two faces of Joe Biden. Says one thing publicly, now he says this. The divides, which until now had mostly been contained behind the scenes, well, how did they go public? Because Joe Biden leaks. Blinken leaks. They control the media. Reflecting growing differences between the two staunch allies as the civilian death toll in Gaza mounts. Speaking to Democrat donors in Washington, Biden voiced criticism of Israel's hardline government and said Netanyahu needed to alter his approach. Quote, I think he has to change. And with this government, this government in Israel is making it very difficult for him to move. Calling Netanyahu's government the most conservative government in Israel's history. Menachem Begin had a very, very conservative government, too. But so what? I warned you about this, folks. They hate these religious parties. They hate the Orthodox Jews. These secularists that Biden and his oak support represent about 25, at tops 30% of the population of Israel. That's who they want in charge. Because they'll sell out their country the way the left sells out our country. He warned support for the country's military campaign is waning amid heavy bombardment of Gaza. Heavy bombardment of Gaza. There's tens of thousands of Israeli infantry in Gaza. You think they're just going to bombs away when they have their own soldiers on the ground? This is CNN. This is the Communist News Network. He warned support for the country's military campaign is waning. I'm on heavy bombardment. You know what's funny? The Israelis are winning. Terrorists are surrendering. And the closer and closer they get to an all-out victory, the more and more pressure there is going to be for Israel to stop. In the name of the citizens, of course. And yet Joe Biden is funding Iran. Joe Biden is funding Hamas through UNRWA. Joe Biden is fine funding the PLO directly. Joe Biden is funding terrorism. Billions for hostages. But it's the Israelis, you see. Biden said right now Israel has most of the world supporting it. No, that's not true. Look at the UN. Most of the world doesn't support it. But said they're starting to lose that support by the indiscriminate bombing that takes place. Quote, unquote. That is a disgusting lie from this bastard. Indiscriminate bombing. And this was all done at a fundraiser. Now let's see where CNN takes this. Before the war broke out, following Hamas's terror attacks on October 7, Biden had been open in his criticism of Netanyahu's governing coalition. Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Israel is a sovereign nation. It's a democracy. It has a parliamentary system. It's called the Knesset. You have to negotiate. There's more give and take on how you create a coalition government, certainly than our country. It's almost like Italy. And so they're very angry that Netanyahu and Likud dares to bring in these right-wingers. Oh, my God. No, they're people of faith into their government. There's nothing radical about them. What's radical is the Biden regime. The Democrats in Congress, our media, they're the radicals. So he's been pounding and pounding and pounding on Netanyahu from day one. With cover from the New York Slimes and Friedman. With cover from self-hating Israelis like Echel Blach. With millions in dark money pouring in, including from Soros front groups. Isn't it amazing? We're supposed to oppose colonialism and imperialism, remember? And yet Joe Biden treats the only Jewish country in the entire world. 
like an old time imperialist and colonialist. He gets to decide what the government's going to look like. He'll put pressure. He'll exercise threats and pressure to oust the duly elected government of Israel. And he runs around talking about Trump as the dictator. He runs around talking about how he promotes democracy. No, he doesn't. Not in the least. Three cheers to Netanyahu in order is attempting to protect his country from the United States and the terrorists. From the United States and the terrorists. Now, Netanyahu is more like Abraham Lincoln. Oh, come on, Mark. What do you mean? Let me repeat it. For the hard of hearing radical left wing Democrat Marxists and their media. Netanyahu is more like Abraham Lincoln. We had a civil war. And one of the main purposes of that war, if not the main purpose, according to Lincoln, was not just to keep the Union together, but to destroy slavery as an institution. That was a point Frederick Douglass would make. That Lincoln prioritized abolitionism. He didn't believe it at first, but he came around to believing that Lincoln was the man, and he was the man. Throughout that war, there were individuals in both parties telling Lincoln to accept a two-state solution, if you will. If you think the casualties in Gaza are bad, even on a per capita basis, the Civil War was horrendous. The civilian casualties. The destruction of entire cities, particularly in the south, almost blown off the face of the earth. Atlanta burned to the ground. Vicksburg almost blown off the face of the earth. And they weren't alone. Richmond was burned. It was an unbelievable war. America never suffered so many casualties. You want to talk about per capita? We had 24, 25 million people in this country. Over 700,000 casualties by the latest figures. Think about that. Lincoln said no. I'm not going to accept two countries. One free and one slave. I am not going to accept that. It was early summer in that election year, 1864. It looked like Lincoln might lose. The casualties were so bad. When would this damn war end? Four years in. Every corner of the nation affected. Northerners were getting tired of the war. Conscripts, whose terms were running out, didn't want to re-up. It was a hellish war. Go look them up, battle after battle after battle, the casualties, 10,000, 20,000, 39,000 per battle. Sometimes over several acres of land. Bull Run 1, Bull Run 2, outside of Washington, D.C. Thousands and thousands of men died, thousands more severely wounded over the same exact battlefield. Gettysburg. Everywhere you stepped on that battlefield, you stepped on either a human body or a horse dead. Vicksburg, the siege of Vicksburg, surrounded one side the Mississippi River, the other side the hillsides. Pummeled, pummeled, pummeled. 
because Grant wanted to end the war, and he knew this was the second biggest supply chain city in the Confederacy, and he needed to destroy it. But it wasn't enough. Look like Lincoln might lose the election. Grant knew it. Sherman, Grant's right-hand man, he knew it. Grant wanted to end the war, and he didn't end the war by ceasefires, by human pauses, by the delivery of fuel or food to fellow Americans. He said no. We have to end this, and we cannot end it by feeding the enemy, by feeding their citizens. We end it by ending it, whatever it takes, or this will go on. Long story short, he sends Sherman to cut through Georgia, another key supply line, Atlanta. And they cut off part of the Confederacy from the rest of the Confederacy. And to drive through Georgia from the north all the way to the sea. And Grant felt this would give them the victory they would eventually need. The final major metropolitan area Providing food and supplies to the Confederacy. Sherman cut through Georgia. He was extraordinary, extraordinarily brutal. They took all the food. They took all the cattle for meat. They took all the horses they need. out of Georgia, and certainly from around Atlanta. And it was on the time they were leaving Atlanta, at the very end, the Union soldiers, really without even Sherman's order, began to burn down the city. They were so disgusted with how long the war had gone on and the brutality of it. And Atlanta was burned down to the ground. And that wasn't the end of it. They tore through the rest of, the, of Georgia to the sea. It was a monumentally important victory that truly began the end of the Civil War and resulted in the re-election of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln was not going to tolerate slavery. Benjamin Netanyahu does not want to tolerate Hamas and terrorism. Not anymore. And he's under pressure to support a two-state solution. Not with his own people, with terrorists. Hamas has announced they don't want two states, they want a caliphate. Iran announced yesterday, caliphate. They're behind a caliphate. Biden and Blinken are, hey, two-state solution. Lincoln fought slavery. Netanyahu's fighting terrorism. Terrorism. There's no negotiating with terrorists. They have to be defeated. And so the enemies of Israel in our country, including in this administration, in the American media, in the Democrat Party, and elsewhere in the world, They pretend that Israel is purposely killing civilians. They pretend that Israel is bombing Gaza like Dresden. They pretend these things to try and force Israel to buckle, to try and force out Netanyahu, a duly elected prime minister. But I don't think it's going to work. He's Lincoln. He's not Biden. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. 
Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Have a very Merry Christmas. Our newspapers during the Civil War, they were reporting day in and day out on civilian casualties, and these were American civilian casualties. How many people died on our border today? Jake Tapper. How many people died on our border today? Philip Bump. Jeremy, Maggie, how come you don't keep track? How many people died on our border today? They don't have any idea. They don't care. No lectures to Biden, no lectures to the Democrats, to our bureaucracy. Nothing. How many women were raped on our border today? How many children were taken into sex slavery today on our border? Just today. We have no idea. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. This is the best of Mark Levin. Merry Christmas. Look at this from Breitbart. John Hayward. Iran rejects two-state solution, demands end of Israel. This is the disconnect. This is the insanity, the imbecilic agenda of the Biden administration and the Obama underlings that serve him. They talk about a two-state solution, Iran and, and Hamas before Iran. They're talking about caliphates. They're already rejecting it. So Israel would surrender its indigenous ancestral lands to entities that hate them and want to destroy them and are going to say that's not enough. But don't worry, Joe Biden will protect them. Joe Biden will be dead and gone a long time. Let me continue, shall I? I think I shall. Zelensky obviously was in Washington today. And Ukraine is desperate. They don't have an industrial base that builds military armaments and equipment, jets and so forth because they were conquered long ago by Stalin who took everything out of Ukraine and brought it into Russia. Ukraine has been largely an agricultural part of Europe with some industrial centers but nothing compared to the rest of the industrial nations in Europe. And they signed a deal in 1994 that I've talked about, first broke it behind this microphone, where they surrendered every nuclear weapon they had to Russia in exchange for a security promise from the United States, Britain, and Russia that all three nations would help Ukraine protect its sovereignty and its borders. You have people on TV, and sadly, you actually have people on TV who claim to be conservatives, constitutionalists, who don't care. 
It's perverse. It's bizarre. It's happened before in our country. Many of them are isolationists, but don't dare call them isolationists. Many of them are pro-Putin, but don't dare call them pro-Putin. Well, what do we call them? Hey, look, Mark, we've poured enough money into that country. And here's the problem. Joe Biden, you are quite right. We have poured tens of billions of dollars into that country, Ukraine. And just like Biden and Blinken are trying to tie the hands of Israel, just like Biden and Blinken are trying to tell them, don't have a crushing victory. You need pauses. You need to feed the enemy. You need to fuel the enemy. The civilians are complaining that the terrorists, the Hamas terrorists, are taking it from them. So what? So this money goes into Ukraine with conditions. You're not to go on offense. Inside Russia. You're not to attack Russian soldiers across the border. You're not to attack Russian supply lines across the border. You're not to attack Russian towns and cities across the border. You're not to take out Putin. You're not to hit Moscow. Only Kiev can get hit. So they place all these conditions, and they tie those conditions to the provision of armaments. It's not that Ukraine receives $10 billion, $30 billion, $40 billion. There's basically a credit line that they have at the Pentagon, and that money is spent for our American industries, our military industries, to make the weaponry for Ukraine. That is, they take them out of our inventory, and they replace them with the money It's an accounting move. So it's still money. Don't get me wrong. We're still spending it. Some of it winds up in Ukraine. But Ukraine has to spend it here. It's the only way they can get tanks, missiles, defense systems. Not going to get them anywhere else. Basically spending our money here. Okay. But Joe Biden has constantly told them how to fight their war. I've been complaining about this from day one. General Keene has been complaining about this from day one. Others who know what they're talking about, who are conservatives, who are with us, you and me, they've been saying the same thing. We pour this money into Ukraine. Why isn't it having a bigger effect? It's because of Biden and his limitations and his directions and his interruptions. And this guy thinks he's the the commanding general of the world, of all of our allies. He's trying to do exactly the same thing with Israel. He's had some success, but Israel has pushed back much harder than Zelensky can, quite frankly. So Zelensky never had the full support of Biden. Oh, sure, today they had a press conference. Oh, sure, the Democrats are insisting that more money go into Ukraine. But the rest of the story is not being told to you, and you see it being played out with Israel. And the enemy there, the terrorists, don't win. Don't hurt civilians. No matter how many of your civilians might get hurt if you don't destroy Hamas. Biden is actually preventing, and this will be very complex and complicated for the left and the Democrats. Mark Levin says, oh, you're damn right. He gives them money, and then he ties one arm behind their back, while the Russians can do whatever the hell they want to the Ukrainian people, to the Ukrainian children as they kidnap them and bring them over the border, as they target their cities and their towns, as they rape and brutalize their women and their men, castrating them. Where are all those stories? Well, they just disappeared from the media. I guess they got bored. I guess they're bored now. Biden has handicapped the Ukrainians. He's kneecapped them. And so he pours money into that country and then tells them what they can and cannot do with it. And what armaments he will make available to them when they use that money to try and purchase armaments. 
No, 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 no jets. He eventually agreed to some jets. No, 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 not heavy artillery that can reach Moscow. He eventually agreed to, but it's always two, three, four months late. And so you literally have an army in Ukraine that's much smaller than the Russian army. Has a much smaller population than Russia. That month to month doesn't know what it can or cannot do. Because of the decisions being made by the Secretary of State and the President of the United States in the Oval Office. They're there making decisions for all our allies that are under attack. I have to believe the Israelis see this, Netanyahu and the others, of what Biden has done to Zelensky in Ukraine. That he has provided them with resources to purchase armaments, but only the armaments that he wants to sell them. And they can only fight the war the way that Biden wants them. To. I'm not talking about the United States as a whole. I'm talking about Biden. Biden. Biden doesn't care if they slug it out forever. That's how much he cares about Ukrainian citizens. He doesn't care if they slug it out for 20 years when he's long gone. He does not want Ukraine to have a victory. Period. He doesn't care if the Israelis slug it out forever. He wants to remove Netanyahu and the Orthodox Jews that are in his administration because in the end, Biden's a bigot too, just like Obama. He wouldn't even allow the hostage families, American Israelis, with hostages taken by Hamas to go to the Hanukkah party last night. Why? Why? Oh, because he's allowed all the leftists, all the phonies, the frauds, the self-haters, they all came. But not the families of the hostages. No. So you're looking at what Biden has done to Ukraine. He gets credit for providing money and armaments. But you've got to look further because you're smart. You're not Jake Tapper. You're not Kobe Hall or Dan Abrams. You're not the racist, bigot, anti-Semite who runs Media Matters. Forget the jackass's name, but all the good on that. And so Ukraine has not gotten what it needs in time to defeat Russia. Now, by defeating Russia, I don't mean going into Russia and defeating Russia, going all the way to Moscow, neither do they. They mean pushing them out of their country and and defending their country. And it's so crucially important because Putin has made clear, I've read what he said, most people in TV and radio have not, that Ukraine is a is a land, a territory on the way to Poland. That's why the Poles are giving the Ukrainians every damn thing they have. That's why the Balkan states, these little countries, three of them, are giving everything they have. They don't have a lot to the Ukrainians. These are not countries built on a war machine like Putin's Russia. This is why Romania is giving Ukraine everything they have. They're right on the border with Ukraine. Ukraine falls, NATO gets involved. That's how important this is. Then, of course, the domino effect with Communist China now threatening the Philippines. Threatening the Philippines. Oh, those islands there? Yeah, they're ours. Japan, those islands there? Yeah, they're ours. Vietnam, you're a good friend. You know that the water's off your shores? Yes, they're ours. They've already claimed this. The South China Sea? Yes, it's ours. The East China Sea? Yes, that's ours too. What are you going to do about it? Well, they're watching. And what they're seeing is Joe Biden doesn't believe in victory. He doesn't believe the Ukrainians should have a victory. He doesn't believe the Israelis should have a victory. The Israelis should negotiate with terrorists who slaughtered their people. If those terrorists were south of our border and slaughtered our people the way they treated the Israelis, the women and the children, there'd be no room for a pause for fuel and food or anything else. As I said earlier in the show, Biden is demanding that Netanyahu provide their enemy 
with fuel and food and medicine. Abraham Lincoln and Ulysses S. Grant. Not just in Vicksburg, but other words, refused to provide food and clean water and medicine of any kind to fellow Americans who they were trying to defeat in order to defeat slavery. But you see, the left in America, the media in America, defeating slavery was a be-all and end-all. And it was, and it should have been. But the Israeli Jews defending themselves from terrorists who want worse than slavery, who want the torture, rape, and elimination of the Jews, that's different. Why is that different? Isn't that a moral imperative? You would think. Iran rejects two-state solution, demands the end of Israel. Hamas rejects two-state solution, demands the end of Israel. Iranian foreign minister, Hussein Yabadabadu, he says they want a caliphate. Hamas says they want a caliphate. They've said it before. Why am I the, the only one who listens to these, these Nazi bastards? No, no, we need a two-state solution for peace. Where has there ever been peace with a two-state solution? Show me one place. Korea? That's not peace. The North has nuclear weapons aimed at the South. And the South surrendered all their nuclear weapons. Another brilliant American administration decision. South Korea has no nukes. North Korea is building nukes. And by the time this administration leaves office which isn't fast enough for me, Iran's going to have nukes. Won't that be great for the next president to have to deal with? You can't undo it. You can't unravel the knowledge. Once they have the knowledge and the know-how, it's done. But Joe Biden's worried about the civilians. Has he ever worried about the civilians in Ukraine? We've already talked about the southern border. Does he ever, ever talk about American civilians on the southern border? Never! Does he ever talk about American civilians in our inner cities who are being slaughtered? Never! What about the American hostages that the Taliban are holding? They never talk about that either. And now we have a report. There's a special group within Israel with top-notch doctors and experts and so forth who believe most of the remaining hostages have been murdered. Unfortunately, I predicted this and warned you about this. It's a terrorist organization. They committed heinous acts. Heinous, humiliating sexual acts against the women and the girls. And by the way, apparently against the men too. Would Joe Biden tolerate that if that happened in Texas? He might. From Mexico? He might. He might. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Traveling for the holidays? Pure Talk has you covered. Because they just added international roaming to over 30 countries. That's right. Whether you're making calls from the Vatican or on a beach in the Bahamas, you're covered. From the steps of Buckingham Palace or your villa in Santorini, you dial away. And here's the best part. There is no rate increase. Pure Talk still saves the average family almost $1,000 a year with plans starting at just 20 bucks a month. And they put you on America's most dependable 5G network. So the coverage is second to none. So don't delay, folks. Switch to Pure Talk, a veteran-owned wireless company with simply the best U.S. customer service team. Now with international roaming to over 30 countries. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-M to make the switch. And you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's big. That's puretalk.com slash Levin to start saving on wireless right now. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Have a very Merry Christmas. This is what I was talking about from the uh, Jerusalem Post. Health Ministry Panel declares Israeli hostages in Gaza deceased. Aiding families in legal limbo. Now, imagine being one of these families. 
My wife met many of these families. I did my mother-in-law, as did my rabbi. And I had a dinner for them. And a place to relax after they came to Washington. The deaths of several Israeli captives have been declared in absentia without any physical evidence. A three-member health ministry medical panel, which has been operating confidentially until now, ruled yesterday that several Israeli hostages are deceased for lack of physical evidence. Women married to a hostage can now be declared widows by the IDF chief rabbi. The panel is comprised of these experts. And they said they've studied the videos and other information from October 7 massacre and kidnapping by Hamas terrorists in southern Israel. And they said we can tell that most of them have been killed. Traveling for the holidays? Pure Talk has you covered. Because they just added international roaming to over 30 countries. That's right. Whether you're making calls from the Vatican or on a beach in the Bahamas, you're covered. From the steps of Buckingham Palace or your villa in Santorini, you dial away. And here's the best part. There is no rate increase. Pure Talk still saves the average family almost $1,000 a year with plans starting at just 20 bucks a month. And... They put you on America's most dependable 5G network. So the coverage is second to none. So don't delay, folks. Switch to Pure Talk, a veteran-owned wireless company with simply the best U.S. customer service team. Now with international roaming to over 30 countries. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-M to make the switch. And you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's big. That's puretalk.com slash Levin to start saving on wireless right now. This is Mark Levin wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Now back to the best of me. Some very clever people, fightbackfilm.org, used uh, AI. I don't pretend to understand AI or how it works. But at least Stefanik's uh, historic questioning of the three pro-Hamas, if you would, presidents of our some of our top universities. And by the way, of course, Stefanik is under attack. Saturday Night Live, you are loathsome bastards. You are a gaggle of anti-Semites. You really are disgusting, considering what took place in Israel. You think this is funny? Well, Mark, some of the cast are... I don't care who the hell they are. People aren't immune from criticism or exposure. It's disgusting. I don't even watch it anymore. I haven't watched it in years, probably 15 years. It's not funny anymore. I don't need their political crap. It's like the, the frauds on late night television. These guys aren't funny. They're actually quite stupid. And very unattractive, may I say, even as a man. May I say that, Mr. Producer? You've got the guy with the funny ear. What the hell's his name? Cobert, with the ear flapping out there like he's Dr. Spock, or Mr. Spock, I should say. Then you got the fat slob. What's the guy that used to work with uh, Howard Stern? You know who I mean, though. His head is bigger than, uh, well, it's twice the size of a normal head. Then you've got that guy, Kimmel, Kimmel, that's right. Then you got the other guy with the talking impediment. All right, never mind. Anyway, let me circle back. Elise Stefanik. Oh, what she did was very political. Oh, what she did was set these people... No, she didn't. Easy responses. Of course I reject anti-Semitism. Of course I think it violates our policies. Of course I am encouraging law enforcement to find out what organizations are operating on our campus. Wow, that was hard. But what if it wasn't a Jewish group, or it wasn't about Jews? What if it was about other minorities? And fightbackfilm.org said, you know what? What about it? And so they take the questioning by Elise Stefanik, and they substitute other minorities. And the responses from these presidents, one former president, then you can see how disgusting and obnoxious this whole damn thing is with these Democrats and their institutions. So take a listen, Mr. Producer, go. 
Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of black and brown people violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. Yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of LGBTQ people, does that constitute bullying or harassment? It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Muslim people is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer. Yes, Ms. McGill. Fantastic. I can assure you at CNN, Jake Tapper, Wolf Blitzer, and the other reprobates, and MSNBC, a conga line of freaks, frauds, and phonies, at the New York Slimes, one creepola after another, the Washington Compost, one reprobate after another, I can assure you, if those were Arab or Muslim students running and locking themselves in lunchrooms and libraries and attics, being surrounded, I can assure you the response would be different by Biden, by the Democrats and their media. I can assure you if this were American blacks, the civil rights leaders, The Congressional Black Caucus, the squad, Hakeem Jeffries, Schumer, CNN, MSNBC, the New York Slimes, the Washington Compost. There'd be riots in the streets, I can assure you. Go down the list, except for Asians. Asians are the, the minority du jour to be discriminated against by the Poison Ivy League schools, by the media, by all the other Democrat Party Marxists and Islamists. Jews and Asians apparently get it. Oh, and by the way, evangelical Christians. And Orthodox Jews, you hear what they say. Can't have a government with all these right-wing extremists, you know, like Orthodox Jews in Israel, the Jewish homeland. We can't have them elected, freely elected, in a coalition government in Israel. Now! We need the left-wing slobs. They used to run the place. That's right. So they'll give up their country. That's all. Israel listens to Biden. Israel will cease to exist. In our own country, we're having to fight Biden and his own policies to prevent the destruction of America. All right, I want to move on to a related subject in some ways. The billionaires, their front groups, the Republican ruling class establishment like Sununu, who got his job because of his daddy, his name, and all the rest of them. Paul Ryan, who was chased out of Congress as a failed speaker. Peggy Noonan, who was a Chris Christie supporter who is pedantic in the way that she writes, as far as I'm concerned. Used to work for Dan Rather before she suddenly worked with Nancy Reagan and Ronald Reagan. I don't know how that happened, but there you have it. They're all behind, you know, Haley, Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley has had five positions on every major issue, but in the beginning... She embraced communist China and gave them land in South Carolina. She opposed offshore drilling. She took the side of Disney against DeSantis in the Florida legislature, and Disney was going full woke, and you can see they're going broke as a result now. She was on the wrong side of that. She refused to sign a very rational bill that basically said men's rooms are for men, women's rooms are for women. DeSantis signed a bill like that. Clearly Trump would support that. Not Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley originally was open to the importation of Palestinians from the Gaza Strip. 
And how would they be assimilated in a country that doesn't even believe in its own culture anymore? Ours. Aren't there enough people coming into this country? I'm just telling you her mindset. Former Secretary of State Pompeo had few good words to say about her. She's not a team player. She goes around the back of people. She's on tape saying, if Donald Trump runs, I won't run. So what is it exactly that she offers? Mr. Sununu. Mr. Koch. Mr. Griffin. Mr. Langone. What exactly does she offer? Well, I spoke to her. And she's the real deal. What do you mean? The real deal of what? Here's the problem, America. She's not a conservative. She doesn't support the conservative Reagan base in this country. She rejects the strides that Donald Trump made, even though she was more than happy to serve in his administration when she thought it would increase her profile. Let's be honest. She would represent another Bush term or a Gerald Ford couple of years or something like that we are facing a vile powerful cultural economic political enemy in this country not an adversary they don't play by the rules they put people in prison who they don't like they're trying to destroy our voting system to ensure that only democrats can win the border's wide open. They've destroyed our public schools. They've destroyed our colleges and universities. They're destroying our economy and the middle class. Nikki Haley is incapable of standing up to this. She's campaigning like a ruling class rhino. She's reaching out to exactly all the wrong people. The governor of New Hampshire. Wow. Rhino. And what's with the part down by your ear? Look, you've gone bald. Look at me. I'm proud. I'm bald. So be it. Live with it or don't. But what's with these guys like his daddy? They, they, they comb the part from like the top of their sideburn on their left or right ear. Have you noticed that, Mr. Producer? And so you're trying to listen to what the guy says, even though he's a mumbler and talks very quickly, like Chris Matthews. But you can't take your focus off the part on his head. It's like that picture of Christy. Did you see that picture of Christy in shorts out in the public, Mr. Producer? Did you say, I mean, how do you not look at that and kind of cringe? I'm just being honest. Just being honest. You know, I found it if you were fatties united. I'm not pretending that I'm above it. But it really is remarkable. Nikki Haley's going to save us from whom? Oh, she's 17 points ahead of Biden. It's because the Democrats are not focusing on Nikki Haley. They're trying to get her nominated. Once they focus on Nikki Haley, they'll turn her into whatever they want to turn her into. Why is it the Democrat Party billionaires are getting behind Nikki Haley? What do they know? Well, they know what you and I know. They'll cut her to shreds. She's got a lousy record. She's got multiple positions on the same issue, but they're comfortable with her, the Republicans, the rhinos, the ruling class. They can get along with her. Who do you think McConnell would like? Nikki Haley. Who do you think Cornyn would like? Nikki Haley. Who do you think Paul Ryan likes? We know. He said Nikki Haley. How about Carl Rove? Nikki Haley. And I told you before, it's just a matter of time. Maybe it's before, but maybe after New Hampshire where... With the Hindenburg, the human Hindenburg throws behind Nikki Haley, too. They don't want a conservative, whether it's Donald Trump or whether it's Ron DeSantis. They don't want them. Nikki will do just fine. You know what she'll do? She'll be a placeholder. She won't fix the Department of Justice. She won't fix the Judiciary Act. She won't fix the border. She's very attuned to what the media have to say about her and the billionaires. And the billionaires in America, what they have to say about her. She's not coming from Main Street, USA. She's not going to. That's my understanding. I read the other day, I think it was yesterday, that she's likely to duck a debate with DeSantis in Iowa. Well, of course she is. 
She's got the Coke machine. C-O, excuse me, K-O-C-H, or whatever. And that group of his, what's that called again? Americans for uh, Prosperity. Ooh, for Prosperity. Coke, who's thrown in with Soros on foreign policy. Oh, the Quincy Institute, John, like John Quincy Adams. Idiots don't even know what John Quincy Adams stood for. So Coke's thrown in with Soros for that. And if you notice, it's always our guys peeling off. The Democrats are fighting. They'd rather not have Biden, but they're going to stand behind Biden the way Gruesome Newsom did in his $70 billion debt. They will stand behind Biden. Hillary standing behind Biden. Better than Biden standing behind her and smelling her hair. But you get my point. In the end, they live or die together. Even before the end, we've got the fifth column in America, in our, in our party. The fifth column. Who didn't want Goldwater? And so many of them voted for Lyndon Johnson. Well, that was a good one. The fifth column. Who didn't want Reagan? And he finally broke through on the third chance. And that would include the Bushies who fought him. The fifth column that didn't want Trump. But they're all behind Nikki Haley. Let's be honest, America, and I don't mean this in a negative way, just to be honest. George H.W. Bush's presidency was a complete failure. It's the bottom ten. And now this one will hurt. George H.W. Bush's presidency, a complete failure. What did they do to advance liberty in our country? To secure the border in our country. To build up our institutions in our country. Nothing. We have a Marxist revolution going on in this country. An American Marxist revolution. In every corner of the culture. And they turn to Nikki Haley? No, I don't think so. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Traveling for the holidays? Pure Talk has you covered because they just added international roaming to over 30 countries. That's right. Whether you're making calls from the Vatican or on a beach in the Bahamas, you're covered. From the steps of Buckingham Palace or your villa in Santorini, you dial away. And here's the best part. There is no rate increase. Pure Talk still saves the average family almost $1,000 a year with plans starting at just 20 bucks a month. And... They put you on America's most dependable 5G network. So the coverage is second to none. So don't delay, folks. Switch to Pure Talk, a veteran-owned wireless company with simply the best U.S. customer service team. Now with international roaming to over 30 countries. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-M to make the switch. And you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's big. That's puretalk.com slash Levin to start saving on wireless right now. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Have a very Merry Christmas. Man, oh, Manischewitz. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. This is the best of Mark Levin. Merry Christmas. I want to delve into this Hunter Biden stuff. As you know, this is my wheelhouse. I have many wheelhouses. This is certainly one of them. This is state a straightforward tax evasion. For four years, four years, Hunter Biden didn't pay any federal income taxes. He didn't underpay. He didn't make mistakes. He didn't pay federal income taxes for four years, from 2017 to 2020. And when he did file tax returns, he filed knowingly false tax returns in other years. 
And it's calculated that he owed $1.4 million in federal income taxes. Of course, we don't talk about state income taxes, but Delaware, I believe, does have a state income tax. I'm sure they're going to get right on it. $1.4 million he didn't pay. Now, typically, you've got interest on something like that and penalty on something like that, and it keeps building and building and building, as a matter of fact. And he spent the money on all kinds of frivolous things, all kinds of grotesque things. He's a sick man. But being a sick man is no excuse for violating the federal law. And to me, the defense has a real problem, as do the media. On the one hand, they say this man was addicted. He couldn't function. He was mentally handicapped. And yet, on the other hand, over $30 million poured into his coffers. Not just from foreign countries, but enemy countries. Front corporations. Burisma. Front company. For state-run communist Chinese oil company. Over $30 million. Now, other family members are mentioned in this indictment, too. Like Joe Biden's brother and others. We know of these front companies that were created, these wash-through companies, over 20 of them, by Hunter Biden and his lawyers. And so what does all this mean here? First of all, it's amazing to watch the media. They are disgusting. Whether it is their support for Hamas, whether it is their support for Russia collusion that never existed with Trump, They are an unconscionable, immoral, sleazy bunch. They're Democrats. So today, they're very busy trying to defend Joe Biden. Joe Biden's not mentioned. So the legal analysts say Joe Biden's name is not in here. There's nothing about Joe Biden in here. Joe Biden's not in here. And Abby Lowell, Hunter Biden's lawyer, is a desperate, desperate lawyer. You know what he's figured out, ladies and gentlemen? You know what the argument is here? Well, it's the Republicans' fault that Hunter Biden didn't pay his federal income taxes. It's their fault. This whole thing's been politicized. It's his fault. No, no, it's the Republicans' fault. How did this all change all of a sudden, he says? They had a deal, and now all of this, because the judge put an end to the fraud that was taking place. She would not accept the so-called deal. She could see it smelled. It stunk to heaven. And in the end, the two parties couldn't even agree on what they were supposed to be making a deal on. Because Hunter Biden, his lawyers, blew it. They should have taken that deal. He should have admitted some level of guilt. But he didn't. Because he's a Biden. Thinks he can get away with it. Let's continue. This proves, say the media, that the Department of Justice is honorable. This proves they're not covering up for the Bidens. Really? Really? This proves that the special counsel is doing his job. I saw, again, Hunter Biden's lawyer refer to the special counsel as a Republican. You know, they used to refer to him as a Republican to show how fair he is to Hunter Biden. Now he's a Republican because how bad he is to Hunter Biden. So what's going on here? A couple of things. Joe Biden will pardon his son whether he's reelected or not. These are federal charges. Joe Biden can, and I predict, will pardon his son. You can pardon somebody who's not been convicted yet. You just have to pardon them broadly for anything they did or may have done. It's happened before. So Joe Biden will pardon his son. So the fact is, ladies and gentlemen, his son is really in no danger of serving one minute 
of prison time. I hear people, could be 17 years. It won't be one minute. Number two. Now, Hunter Biden will use the fact of the charges against him as an argument for not testifying before Congress. You have a right not to incriminate yourself. And if you testify before Congress, you may incriminate yourself. Well, they can probably give him use immunity that's been given to people who've been defendants in cases to testify before. That won't be done here. It won't be done here because the Republicans want his testimony. Biden doesn't want to give him the testimony. So this will drag out for a period of time. Number three. I read this indictment carefully. There's absolutely no focus on the source of the money. Zero. Isn't that the big deal? Isn't that the big issue? Came from the communist Chinese. Came from the Russians. Came from the prior pro-Russian Ukrainian regime. And other misgrants and malcontents. Over $30 million. There's not a word about that. In the indictment. And the media in full cover-up mode. Praetorian Guard mode. As they were. And the laptop was discovered. We have a media that keeps telling us that the president's not connected. There's no association whatsoever. They have no curiosity. When it's Donald Trump, he's guilty as charged. That's the end of it. Over $30 million. A drunk. A drug addict. A sex addict. We're told he couldn't function. While he's raking in tens of millions of dollars. While he's running, I don't know how many businesses, front groups. Creating these wash through, these launder through companies. To try and conceal where the money's coming from and who's getting what. Which is why Comer and his committee and others have had to issue subpoenas to banks. And get around the Biden administration to get some access to these Wire transfers and bank accounts and all the rest of it. Now, we are to believe that while Hunter Biden, over a course of years, is making tens of millions of dollars, while Joe Biden is vice president of the United States, while the communist Chinese pay millions of dollars to the University of Pennsylvania to set up a phony think tank in Joe Biden's name to get him a $900,000 a year salary for which he did nothing. We're supposed to look at all this, America. These infinite number of transactions, payoffs, to a drunk, druggy, Sex addict, good for nothing kid who never did anything for the money, but sold his name. Hands his daddy his phone, his daddy's at, the, at dinner, his daddy's met most of his business partners, his daddy's staff when he's vice president is in touch with Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden's partners and his staff and his businesses. And we're told by CNN and MSNBC and all the other reprobates. There's nothing here. Move along. Move along. And then they tell us, you can't prove fill in the blank. We're all the journalists. We're all the investigative reporters. They're nowhere because they're not assigned to do a damn thing. If you want to hear propaganda, if you want to hear state-run media, watch CNN. If you want to hear propaganda, state-run media, watch MSNBC. If you want to read government talking points, Biden talking points, read the New York Times and the Washington Post. It's all right there. The Republicans have nothing. 
Aren't you even interested in the New York Times about any of this? You were quick to do the cover-up job on the laptop. You're good at cover-ups. The Holocaust, the slaughter of the Ukrainians by Stalin in 1930. You're very good at cover-ups over there at the New York Slimes. Joe Biden is corrupt. And the story changes. He didn't know anything about Biden's business, excuse me, about his son's business activity. Nothing. He's handed a phone. He's meeting people he doesn't know, but he knows their business. But playing God, I didn't know anything. I didn't ask anything. I don't know anything. Okay. He's going to play the role of the dummy. I don't recall. I don't know. The media, it's not the president, it's his son for crying out loud. They're going after his son. It's okay, they've gone after Trump's sons. That precedent is, and daughter, that precedent's been set. That precedent's set. Doesn't matter anymore. That used to be the case, but it doesn't matter anymore. Given what the Democrats and their media did to Donald Trump and his family, and still are. And they're creating other precedents that will be used against the Democrats now or one day in the future. You know, they're the arsonists out there. They think that only they can light fires. It's not true. But in this case, they have Hunter Biden dead to rights. Okay. The problem is. This is being done in part to protect Joe Biden. Hunter Biden's not going to serve a minute in prison because daddy will pardon him whether he wins or not. Hunter Biden will not testify before the House of Representatives because now he's been indicted. But Mark, it could be a different subject. No, it's not going to work that way. What else is missing? The Foreign Registration Act. It's a very broad act. It was never used to prosecute people before. I think in its entire history, less than half a dozen times, but then here comes Donald Trump. Here comes Paul Manafort and Roger Stone. And so they dust it off and say, hey, we have a weapon to use against these guys. FARA. Say what? FARA. FARA. Wasn't she a model? Didn't she pass away, Mr. Producer? No, 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 no. FARA, federal law. Federal law, yeah. These interactions with federal government, uh, with other governments, and by the way, you don't have to take one penny. They didn't register, so throw the book at them. Get that man if you put him in solitary confinement. Get a SWAT team over there. Get a SWAT team after Roger Stone. Throw that guy in prison. Excuse me? What are you talking about? Yes. Now put a gag order on them. Make them shut up. They can't defend themselves in public. No, 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 no. Just let CNN and the rest of them smear the crap out of them. He hasn't been charged with that violation yet. Hopefully he will be because that ensnares Joe Biden. How? I've explained this before. I'll explain it again right after the break. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Have a very Merry Christmas. The reason the indictment doesn't mention the source of the money, because if we start talking about the source of the money, it creates implications. Implications on the Foreign Agents Registration Act. Implications that involve Joe Biden as then Vice President. Implications that ensnare Joe Biden. So what's most important to be watching for, ladies and gentlemen, is if there are any second steps by this prosecutor. Second steps. If they, perfo- if they pursue Hunter Biden on FARA violations, and I'm going to explain to you soon what FARA is with specificity, then that does in fact ensnare Joe Biden. Certainly as a material witness, material witness against his own son. But I would argue beyond that, that he was a co-conspirator in enabling 
his son to defy the Foreign Agents Registration Act. I'll explain when we return. This is Mark Levin wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Now back to the best of me. Stick with me, America. You're going to understand this stuff better than anybody else. Because you're listening to this program, and I think that's why you listen. It's not hit and run, and then we move on. We take our time with this. Now, I just want to reiterate something that I've said to you many times. I've said it on Levin TV. I've said it on Fox. If this is the basis for the impeachment of Joe Biden, I think that's a huge mistake. I think it should be an article of impeachment against Joe Biden. But the first article ought to be his violations of immigration law and two parts of the U.S. Constitution related to that, including his oath to uphold the law and the requirement that a president enforce execute a law whether he agrees with it or not this president has intentionally violated multiple immigration laws which has done enormous harm to this country it is a high crime both the violation of his oath the violation of the requirement to uphold and execute laws and the enormous damage it has done to our country our society and our culture that's what the founders meant excuse me that's what the framers meant by a high crime that's what they meant by high crime. They didn't mean, oh, he's on drugs, <clears throat> so he must be high. They didn't mean, oh, he killed 17 people. No, they meant a high crime is a constitutional offense. and It's an offense against our civil society. And Joe Biden falls within the four corners of that. You do not need depositions. You do not need discovery. You do not need subpoenas. It's black and white. No need for an investigation, and let me put you to the test. When you go to synagogue, if you're Jewish, when you go to church, if you're Christian, when you go to the diner, if you like to eat, or just go to your neighbor, I want you to ask the person near you. Could you explain to me what's going on with Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and all this money and everything else, and they'll say either something general or they'll say no. And many people won't give a damn. If you say to people, what do you think about the open border? You can't stop them from talking, can you, Mr. Producer? The crimes, the lawlessness, the deaths, What's happening in their towns, <coughs> excuse me, what's happening in their states, they see it on television. That's Article 1 of impeachment, ladies and gentlemen. You want the people to get behind you, and you want them to understand what somebody's being impeached for, and all these media types, let them defend it. But it's indefensible. It's indefensible. What are they going to say? So I just point that out. Number two, Article 2, should be the so-called student loan forgiveness. He's given upwards of half a... What is it? Hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm wrong. Billions and billions of dollars in student loan forgiveness, quote-unquote. In violation skirting a Supreme Court decision that says he doesn't have the power to do it. He has seized the power of the purse from the Congress, more specifically the House of Representatives. That is another high crime. He's violating the Constitution. The power of the purse clause, I call it. He's violating his oath of office. And he is unconstitutionally and illegally conferring billions and billions of dollars onto individuals who he feels will vote for him. That's Article 2. You can have subsections. Now, if you want to get into this other stuff, which is very important, don't get me wrong, 
But do you want to get him impeached? Do you want the people behind us or not? Then you get into all this other stuff, which is important. But it's not the top of the list. It's not the top of the list. It's in the list. Which I keep trying to explain to these guys on Capitol Hill, even my dear brother, Sean Hannity, who was on here yesterday, 10 minutes going to this, and then, then and this guy's been, and this one here, and it went under here, and it went over here, and it went, I got it. But that's not going to persuade many people outside of people who want Biden removed for many important reasons. I'm telling you, if they don't handle this right, it's going to collapse. And right now, guess what? Because they expelled this guy, this reprobate from New York, who wasn't convicted of anything. That's a first. And because they forced out Kevin McCarthy, who's now said, okay, well, I got to get on with my life. I spent an enormous amount of time raising funds, trying to get a majority here. And then they threw me out like no speaker in the history of the United States. So I'm going to focus on my family. They just lost two members, or they're going to. They have a two-vote majority, Mr. Producer. Two-vote majority. We have two votes that separates the majority from the minority in the House of Representatives. Maybe two of them will get the flu one day. I can't get in there. I just can't get in there. Speaker, Speaker John, I can't get in there. By the way, today's show is dedicated to a very dear friend of mine and the family. You've heard me talk about Teddy before. Brilliant cardiologist. Just a wonderful human being. So many lives he saved. So many people he helped. We can all aspire to be like this man. Funny. Self-effacing. Family man. Renaissance man in many ways. And he passed away two days ago. And his funeral was today. You've heard me talk about Teddy. When I talk about Genesis, he used to use Genesis. And he loved it. And so I kid him about it on the air, obviously. He will be deeply missed by everybody who knew him, came in touch with him, our family, and certainly his family. So this show is dedicated to him. Now let me tell you about Farah. According to the United States Department of Justice website. It's an acronym for the Foreign Agents Registration Act of 1938. It requires the registration of and disclosures by, quote, an agent of a foreign principal who either directly or through another person within the United States, number one, engages in political activities on behalf of a foreign principal. Number two, acts as a foreign principal's public relations counsel, publicity agent, information service employee, or political consultant. Number three, solicits, collects, disperses, or dispenses contributions, loans, money, or other things of value for or in the interest of a foreign principal. Number four, represents the interests of the foreign principal before an, any agency or official of the United States government. And by the way, you don't have to be paid one penny to be covered by this statute. And as you can see, Hunter Biden is the gold standard for people who are to file under FARA. Now, what's the purpose of this law? It's an important tool, they say, to identify foreign influence in the United States and address threats to national security. And by the way, how come nobody ever mentions that Hunter Biden was a threat to national security with all these associations overseas, including with our dire enemies, our sworn enemies? 
using our name. Our name. His name. The central person of FARA is to promote transparency, writes the government, with respect to foreign influence within the United States by ensuring that the U.S. government and the public know the source of certain information from foreign agents intended to influence American public opinion, policy, and laws, thereby facilitating informed evaluation of that information. FARA fosters transparency by requiring that persons who engage in specified activities within the United States on behalf of a foreign principal register with and disclose those activities to the Department of Justice. Department of Justice is required to make such information publicly available. Obviously, Hunter didn't want it publicly available, did he, America? Obviously, the Biden family didn't want it publicly available. I mean, as I said, they set up these 20 front corporations to try and keep it secret. Joe Biden denied that he'd ever talked to his son about any business. They denied that the Hunter laptop was Hunter's laptop. It was Russian, Russian. So they did everything they could to skirt this law. What are the penalties? The penalty for a willful violation of fire is imprisonment for not more than five years, a fine of a quarter of a million dollars or both. Certain violations are considered misdemeanors, with penalties of imprisonment of not more than six months, a fine of not more than $5,000 or both. There's also civil enforcement provisions that empower the Attorney General to seek an injunction requiring registration under FARA. Now, I'm making the point that Joe Biden knew damn well that his son was involved in these foreign activities, or at least certain foreign activities, or at least some foreign activities. I said... You don't have to receive one penny from a foreign government or a front corporation for a foreign government or a foreign government corporation, not one, to violate this statute. Obviously, Hunter Biden received a ton, over $30 million, which he dispersed through those cover-up accounts. It is absurd. It is ridiculous to argue that Joe Biden didn't know anything about any of this when he was sitting at the table, when he was asked to talk to these foreign agents, these uh, foreign individuals, when he brags at a public forum, you've seen it on video, that he interfered with the investigation of Burisma, that he ordered, he directed then the Russian-affiliated Ukrainian government to fire the prosecutor. He didn't just think that up. He's the vice president. Why is that on his mind? Takes his son to go to China. Apparently not once did they discuss why his son was on Air Force Two to go to China. He just wanted what? Some good food? Meet some more women? Get fentanyl directly? I don't know. Does anybody believe any of this? Yes, CNN, MSNBC, and the other liars. The other liars. They're supposed to be close to this family. Joe Biden has a history, even when he had all his mental faculties, which was bad enough, of lying, a pattern of lying about anything and everything, and he's been lying about this. He is a co-conspirator. In Hunter Biden's violations, multiple, of this federal statute, FARA. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Have a very Merry Christmas. A couple things, folks. We have two great Life, Liberty, and Levins for you this weekend. Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central. You know the times. Sunday, same exact times. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, the men and women, the freedom fighters all over the world, the men and women in Ukraine, our brothers and sisters in Israel. Good night, Spritey and Griffey. 
Good night, Pepsi and Zelda. Good night, Smokey and Gigi. Good night, Indy, Patton, Rory, Barney, and Barney. And good night, Dad, and good night, Mom. Good night, Leo. Good night, Joe. And tonight, good night, Teddy. Good night, America. Good night, America.